Hello and welcome to this special chapter reading of Brand Bewitchery that will show you how to use the story cycle system to craft compelling presentations and mesmerizing long-form communications that transport your audience from their world into yours to dramatically increase your growth and 10x your sales at least. All that and more right here on The Business of Story. I am Park Howell, and I'm so glad you're with us today. By now, you know the power of the story cycle system to guide you in creating a dynamic brand story strategy. But since the story cycle is inspired by Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, you can use it for so much more. This framework is perfect to craft all of your long-form communications, sales presentations, strategize your website user interface, your customer journeys, and pretty much any messaging tactic where you absolutely must understand the journey your customer is on, the stories they are telling themselves, so that you know how to best connect with them from their point of view on the path with you. In Appendix 1 of Brand Bewitchery, I walk you through how the story cycle system helped me create my TEDx talk, and I show you how you can use it to make all of your communications more compelling, immensely more persuasive, influential, and most importantly, human. Appendix 1, Using the Story Cycle System for Presentation Creation. Quote, the art of storytelling can be used to drive change, end quote. Sir Richard Branson. What I learned about storytelling with my TEDx talk. One thing I hope you experience in the creation of your brand story is that you can use the and, but, and therefore foundational narrative framework, the five primal elements of story, and the story cycle system for all of your communications. The following is an example, which happens to be my TEDx Gilbert talk, of how you can use the story cycle system to guide the creation of a presentation or long-form communications piece. You'll spot ABTs and anecdotes throughout as I use them to make my points. But first, let me share a bit of background about the arduous process of getting my presentation in shape. Your most compelling personal brand story is found in your simple scenes. Do you ever get caught in mouth when you speak? Nerves set in, your armpits seem to suck all the moisture out of your kisser? Well, it happened to me. I was the last of six TEDx presenters at TEDx Gilbert on March 24, 2018. The theme we spoke to was this, identity, who we are, and where we're going. It was a standing room only crowd in the University Center Theater in Gilbert, Arizona. The place was a sauna when I stepped on the stage at 9 p.m. About a minute into my presentation, the plumbing department to my mouth experienced a shutdown. TED organizers don't like you packing around water on the stage, so I had to forge on as my tongue became carpet. But then I remembered a trick our master of ceremonies, Rachel Mann, had shared with us earlier in the day. When your mouth feels like it's wallpapered with saltine crackers, imagine sucking on a lemon drop. I carved out a section of my brain to picture that sour sucker without missing a beat in my presentation. My sprinkler system kicked on to rehydrate my gummy gums. Try it. Picture yourself sucking on a lemon drop right now. Wait for it. What just happened in your mouth? Such is the power of story. We're visual beings. Stories paint pictures that trigger our nervous system. Even making up a fictional narrative of a tart candy tricks your brain into thinking you're actually experiencing it and your body responds appropriately. How to be the best and boldest non-fictional you. The lemon drop experiment is not only a lifesaver for cotton mouth, it's also a savory example of how stories transport us. From saltines to lemon drops, 
your mind lives vicariously through the telling. But the problem is that we often live into the wrong story due to the personal narratives we tell ourselves. We live into fiction. We are so busy living up to what we believe other people think about us that we don't remain true to our own authentic story. Social media fuels this fake world as we all try to keep up with the Joneses by posting perfectly coiffed images of our beach vacations, envious gatherings, and for whatever reason, the coconut-crusted mahi-mahi plate we had for lunch. This was the TEDx topic I explored. In this fictional world, how can we be our best non-fiction selves, even when we think our audiences expect an epic adventure out of us? So I asked the audience to stop looking for their heroic stories and instead start finding their scenes, those seemingly insignificant moments that have shaped who they are today. Find your scenes and your story will find you. How to frame your authentic story. I consult, teach, coach, and speak on the power of story for personal, professional, and organizational branding. But like Dr. Vo, my dentist who doesn't perform his own root canals, I needed help extracting my TEDx presentation from my cluttered mind. So I turned to Tamsin Webster, a brilliant presentation coach who has her own approach to storytelling she calls the Red Thread Method. Tamsin was also the producer of TEDx Cambridge, so she knows the TED stage well. Her coaching was invaluable to help me frame my message. I've learned from my own story workshops that we get so close to our individual narrative that it is difficult to find our theme without the clear vision and input of others. Plus, working with another story wizard helped reaffirm my appreciation that this story stuff is difficult without the proper guidance. When I thought I had finally arrived with my script, I sent it to Jen Dill the producer of TEDx Gilbert, but it didn't pass muster. Jen said that she liked my big idea, but that my message wasn't clearly communicated. Talk about taking a quill pen to the heart of a storyteller. Mrs. Pintler, my fourth grade English teacher, immediately popped to mind, giving me a fat red F on a paper I'd worked so hard on. So with just two weeks to go before TEDx Gilbert, I tossed my first attempt and start it over. Relying on the applied science and bewitchery of story. I ruthlessly edited, but I was lucky. As I searched for the connective tissue in my narrative, the universe delivered a few choice insights and stories in my hour of need that are now reflected in my presentation. For instance, Angela Crow's story, which you heard about and read in chapter 7, presented itself during a business of story workshop I delivered to Silver Line Salesforce Solutions just prior to the TEDx Gilbert talk. Her story was the ideal example to demonstrate the premise of my presentation. I've learned that when you are following your true story, the universe will deliver in your time of need. The trick is to be paying attention and recognize the gifts when they arrive. While the red thread helped me frame my message, I return to the story cycle system framework that I was so familiar with to put the final touches on my speech. I even had my friend and artist Lisa Rothstein of drawingoutyourgenius.com illustrate my talk for three reasons. One, to help me visually memorize my presentation. Two, to illustrate the story cycle spiral in action. And three, to demonstrate how to string together scenes through anecdotes that create your overall story. Here's how my TEDx Gilbert script and presentation works as guided by the 10-step story cycle system. TEDx Gilbert Talk, how to use the story cycle system to guide your long-form storytelling. I know an amazing lady who will celebrate her 93rd birthday on April 5th. When she was just four years old, Pat was sitting in a strange and cold waiting room in a hospital in Wenatchee, Washington. She was eager for the arrival of her new baby sister, Diane, but the surroundings kind of creeped her out. Then out of nowhere, this nurse shows up, dressed in her nurse whites, like a guardian angel. She chatted with the little girl to set her at ease and then reached into her pocket, pulled out an orange, and gave it to her. 
Pat never forgot the kindness of that complete stranger. In fact, because of it, she became a nurse after World War II. She got married at 29, had seven kids in nine years, and if you ever wondered if God had a sense of humor, he put her in charge of starting the sex ed program at her children's school, St. Brendan's in Bothell, Washington. After her brood had grown, she volunteered for nearly three decades at Overlake Hospital in Bellevue until her mid-80s. Most recently, she has been caring for her husband, who is battling Alzheimer's. Just imagine all the people she has helped over the past 70 years because, as she told me, that seemingly insignificant moment in a waiting room, a thoughtful nurse, and the warmth she bestowed through the symbolism of an orange. Do you know what your true calling is? As Pat showed, you don't need to craft some epic tale about love and loss to find it. Instead, look for the simple scenes that set everything in motion for you, those small moments that have shaped who you are today. I started to realize just how important scenes are in our lives when, in 2006, I began studying the applied science and bewitchery of storytelling. I had been in branding and marketing for over 20 years, and I watched as the advertising paradigm as we knew it was falling apart. Brands used to own the influence of mass media, but the masses had become the media, and it got difficult to rise above the noise, stand out, and be heard. So I went looking for the answer. I discovered an anecdote is the antidote. The human mind yields helplessly to the suction of stories, says Jonathan Gottschall, author of The Storytelling Animal, Why Stories Make Us Human. We view storytelling as our most powerful survival tool to evolve from cavemen to consumers. I believe it because I've experienced the magic of being a storytelling ape myself. In fact, science is revealing how stories shape us. Functional brain scans show that when we consume a story, the region of our brain called the left temporal cortex lights up, thinking we are actually playing a role in that story. Blood tests show that good stories can trigger five neurotransmitters that make us experience what the protagonist is experiencing. These include serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, cortisol, and endorphins. For instance, when I was invited to speak at this TEDx event, I was pretty pumped. My mind was flooded with serotonin because I felt wanted and important. This made me happy. Then I got excited about the task of finding my big idea and anticipating the rewards of sharing my experiences with you. This triggered dopamine, providing me with optimism and delight. Recalling and writing the stories within this talk has released within me oxytocin, the drug that creates understanding, empathy, and connection. When I experienced the crisis of being told that my final draft needed work, lots of work, well, my cortisol pump fired up, providing the focus I needed. And when I had to burn the midnight oil because time was running out, endorphins kicked in for endurance, summoning my second wind and delivering the euphoria of overcoming this challenge. Do you know these feelings? Ira Glass, host of This American Life, who draws 1.7 million listeners every week to his stories, said, The power of anecdote is so great that it has a momentum all its own. He contends, no matter how boring the facts are, with a well-told story, you feel like you're on a train that has a destination. No wonder we call it the theater of the mind. Stories shape who we are individually and collectively, but be careful, because when we hear them on the Ira Glass scale, we're tempted to think that our stories don't measure up, even as our overcommunicated world implores you to tell your story. I say forget about your story and locate your scenes first, those moments that have shaped who you are today, which created your superpower. Your story will then find you. Let me give you an example. Two weeks ago, I met Angela Crow, a soft-spoken 30-something Ukrainian immigrant. She works for a fast-growing high-tech customer relationship management firm in New York. I was doing a story cycle workshop with 50 of their top sales and marketing people when Angela volunteered to tell her story. 
She said that her sole purpose at the company is to build important alliances and partnerships within the organization and its customers. That was all fine and dandy, but when I pressed her to recall the specific moment when she knew this was her superpower, she pushed back. Perhaps it was because we were working her story in front of all of her colleagues. Maybe it was too painful of a moment to share in public. After the session, she came up to me and said, I didn't tell you everything. I know. How come, I asked. Well, I've been told that business people wouldn't think it is appropriate to talk about my hard times in the orphanage. Orphanage? <laughs> Wait a sec. You grew up in a Ukrainian orphanage, I asked. Yes, since birth until I was 18. It was hard. People picked on me and abused me, so I don't talk about it. I'm told no one really wants to hear it, she said. Well, how'd you cope? She recalled the moment when she realized she had to surround herself with kids she could trust and with adults who didn't just care for her, but about her. And Jella built groups of these people to help her rise above the conditions. Oh my God, no wonder you excel at building alliances and partnerships, I said. You grew up doing it to survive. I encouraged Angela to absolutely talk about her life in the orphanage without having to go into all of the difficult details. I mean, come on, Ukrainian orphanage, that story sort of tells itself. She nodded in agreement. I learned that Angela moved to the States when she was 18, earned two degrees from the University of Georgia, and then a master's in international business from Georgia State, and has had a successful career in technology. I coached Angela by saying, have the courage to tell your story because you are the epitome of the American dream. Never let anyone quiet that. And here's how you can use it. Just imagine looking into the eyes of your next prospective client and asking them, when was the last time your vendor orphaned you? Didn't do what they said they'd do. Left you feeling abandoned. I promise you that will never happen with me. She smiled and seemed so relieved. When I asked her if I could retell her story tonight, she said, absolutely. But like in every story, when you strive for something, the universe will push back, punch you in the nose, test you just to see how badly you really want it. And the universe has gotten even better at it in the fictional world we live in today, especially with social media. That quote-unquote like thumb is the opioid pusher of the web, addicting us with serotonin, dopamine, and endorphins, causing us to wear our happy masks even when we're sad. And of course, there's FOMO, the fear of missing out, as we become fawning voyeurs to others' adventures. Then we make the greatest personal narrative mistake. We compare what we think our small stories are to everyone else's fictional epics. But what this really leads to is epic alienation and loneliness. Look, we're social human beings. Being connected to people is essential to our sanity and our survival. There's nothing more fulfilling than feeling understood, appreciated, and trusted by those who are close to us. But what do we do to connect with others? Well, we play roles in their lives, live into their stories to try to fit in, connect with them on their terms. But these roles are often inauthentic to who we really are. The real problem when we're living someone else's story is that we lose confidence in ourselves as we try to measure up to their expectations. We don't play to our strengths, weakening our impact, and we lose time toiling in fictional pursuits while our true journey waits for us in the wings. We are so busy looking for the big stories to impress others that we don't appreciate the small scenes that have made an impression on us our unique moments that have shaped who we are today. Believe me, I know the feeling. The universe gave me a wake-up call A funny call thing happened September after 14th, I gave this talk. I was working with Banner with Health in here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I was years, doing I a half-day session with built my advertising agency. administrators and doctors. I started out in a little and as I was driving house, over to their headquarters, purchased a building, I was thinking, added lots what would be the connection story that, that, that I should begin with so that my audience and I can connect, that my siblings would appreciate, and I thought of my mom's story with the orange. I go, I wasn't happy. Better, you know, there's no better story than that to, to connect with these folks. Story. 
So when my I got there, was hiding they were ramping up another fact, session, and I, I was kind of getting my game face on for five years. And when years. I walked up to the As podium, I, mentioned, I, was I looked over by storytelling, and using there's a bag of oranges, sit story strategies, to never in all grow. of my speaking and coaching career leaders, throughout the international destinations I've been teams. over the past decade. In fact, Arizona have State I ever had a even bag asked of oranges sitting next to the podium when I'm about ready to launch into a story about an orange and health Which I did. Anyways, I mean, the what thing honor. that really the intrigues me about all that daring me to live into my most powerful story, stories, to pivot away from the advertising career I knew, and into they a have new an realm. energy at 55, all their middle age. And I mean, they just I thought, boy, the serendipity circumstances that we've all experienced in Although our lives. I was hoping for something and when better. we don't tell those stories, now I hide them away. Teach, coach, and speak on how to use your afraid of being trolled or whatever. To make you well, we miss out on that energy world, that serendipity. Because shows here's up in the, the truth I knew, and that way that, that we can learn truly from connect deeply Compelling with our audiences is and even with ourselves, moments. because we know we are leading that your epic adventure that through, through the stories we tell, which lead through to the stories truth. we share, when you and through the your truth, stories we live. You find superpower to nudge the world in any direction you choose. But here's the toughest part of this story scene thing. Hollywood calls it the dark night of the soul. I prefer the belly of the whale. I know someone who might call it Ukrainian orphanage. It is in these moments of struggle, when the universe is putting the screws to you and your character, it is here where you will find the pivotal scenes that propel your story forward. But like an anthropologist, you have to dig them up. They're typically buried under the detritus of life, scrubbed from your immediate recall due to their unpleasantness, or hidden beneath the pile of scripts others think you should be playing to. Picture one evening, a nine-year-old boy named James is in his kitchen with his aunt. While she's enjoying her tea, James stands at the stove by a boiling teapot. He's fascinated by the steam coming out of the spout. So much so that he holds a silver spoon over the jet stream and watches as drops of water form on the spoon and run down the handle, marveling at this simple phenomenon. His aunt is pissed, thinks he's crazy. She barks at him about, read a book or do something useful for a change. Aren't you embarrassed for yourself, she scolds. Imagine how James felt. Fortunately for us, the boy was undaunted. Two decades later, in 1765, the then 29-year-old James Watt invented a new kind of steam engine that helped usher in the Industrial Revolution. His teapot scene led to a marvelous journey that impacted all of humanity. And when you think of marvelous journeys, what TED Talk would be complete without channeling Steve Jobs? His iconic odyssey started in seemingly insignificant moments, too like when his parents admonished him for wasting time studying calligraphy at Reed College in Oregon. Ah, but what did his fascination produce? The graphical interface that launched Apple and revolutionized our computing world. You see, even revolutions begin in moments of discovery and inspiration. So stop looking for your stories and start finding your scenes. When you own your unique moments, wonderful things happen. You will clarify your fundamental origin story that will help people understand who you are and where you are going. You'll amplify your impact with your personal narrative by enabling others to experience what you experienced, connecting your shared beliefs and values with theirs. And living into your authentic story simplifies your life by you just being you. So how do you find your scenes and live into your most powerful story? Before you go to bed tonight, jot down three moments that have shaped who you are today. Simply start by writing, that time when. That time when something suddenly piqued your curiosity and you had to dive into it headlong. That time when a seemingly insignificant moment surprisingly became a major turning point for you. That time when you did something you thought you couldn't. What was your enlightening calligraphy moment, your curious teapot incident, your episode of feeling lost and abandoned? Or, as with my mom, Nurse Howell, what is that symbolic orange that inspired your purpose? In the morning, start stringing those scenes together. You might even get a little pit in your stomach as your true calling awakens within you. I promise you'll learn, as I did, that 
The most potent story you will ever tell is a story you tell yourself. So make it epic. Story on, my friends. That was my TEDx Gilbert speech. And actually, I built it upon the framework of the story cycle system. And if you go right through it, that backstory begins with telling my mom's story, but not revealing who she is. The hero in this are the audience members, right? And then begging that question of them, you know, um, start looking for your scenes and your story will find you. Stakes. What's at stake for them is to find their authentic story so that they can share it with the world for the significance that they wish for and want. Well, the disruption in their life is they're dealing with all these phony stories out there, these uh, fictions that are going on that they feel like they can't live up to and they want to do something about it and find the courage to be able to do something about that, right? Then we move on to obstacles. Well, what's standing in their way? Well, of course, it's living into other people's stories. It's buying into all those crazy stories on TikTok and Facebook and Twitter and whatever that shows everybody in their best light and how to live up to that. And that big obstacle is how do you do it? How do you find these moments and actually share them quickly so people actually care? Then I come in as their mentor or guide, because remember, they are the heroes of this particular TEDx Gilbert talk. So my backstory of, you know, 35 plus years in the advertising branding world, finding storytelling and the power of it, and even how it has showed up in my life, leading to that big aha, because the truth I knew, but then I had to learn it for myself, was that compelling storytelling is always about those moments. Those scenes are composed of your experiences that define your beliefs, which lead to your truth. When you unwrap your truth, you find superpower to nudge the world in any direction you choose. Then we jump into the journey. How do you actually do this? So I share lots of different stories to demonstrate or model the thinking about finding those moments, sharing them, and then blowing audiences away with them because they inform and they indicate and illustrate who you are today. Victory then comes in. What's the victory? Well, you revolutionize how you go about your career, about your life, about the stories that you live into and the stories you share with others. The moral of this story is what? When you own your unique moments, wonderful things happen. You will clarify your fundamental origin story that will help people understand who you are and where you are going. You'll amplify your impact with your personal narrative to enable others to experience what you experienced. And living into your authentic story simplifies your life by you just being you. Then finally, the ritual comes in, the 10th step of the story cycle system, and that is to get them to do something, to ritualize this behavior in their life. Start looking for those moments, you know? What was your enlightening calligraphy moment, your curious teapot incident, your episode of feeling lost and abandoned, or as with my mom, Nurse Howell, what is that symbolic orange that inspired your purpose? course, then I ask them to go home and write those down and review them in the morning and see how their stories come together, how they come to light, because all we're doing is knitting together those scenes, those moments that have shaped who we are today that then tells our story for us and gives us a story of guiding light to live into. The three-step TEDx Gilbert story exercise for your team. Do you want to build more camaraderie within your team? Many of my clients are doing the following with my TEDx talk. Number one, gather your team and watch the video. Two, have them spend that evening away from the office finding the scenes that have shaped who they are today and why they do what they do for you and your organization. Three, Gather again the next morning and have each team member share their story in under two minutes about a moment that shaped who they are today. This simple story exercise creates understanding for what fellow team members are about. It helps people appreciate what others are going through, and it creates empathy that builds trust. Clarifying your stories also helps you get focused on who you are and where you're going. And if for whatever reason you or some of your people sour on your current situation in life, 
It's simply because you are not yet living into your most potent story. Think of this story exercise as your lemon drop to create a personal narrative you'll salivate over. A funny thing happened after I gave this talk. I was working with Banner Health here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I was doing a half-day session with many of their administrators and doctors. And as I was driving over to their headquarters, I was thinking, what would be the connection story that I should begin with so that my audience and I, well, can connect, share beliefs and values, right? And I thought of my mom's story with the orange. I go, what a better, you know, there's no better story than that to, to connect with these folks. So when I got there, they were ramping up another session. I was kind of getting my game face on. And when I walked up to the podium, I looked over and there's a bag of oranges sitting there. I mean, Never in all of my speaking career throughout the international destinations I've been over the past decade have I ever had a bag of oranges sitting next to the podium when I'm about ready to launch into a story about an orange and healthcare. Anyways, the thing that really intrigues me about all that is when you do tell stories, true, authentic, real-world stories, they have an energy all their own. And they just invoke this serendipity circumstances that we've all experienced in our lives. And when we don't tell those stories, when we hide them away, when we are too cautious, we're afraid of being trolled or whatever, well, we miss out on that energy, that serendipity that shows up in life, and that way that we can truly connect deeply with our audiences and even with ourselves, because we know we are leading that epic adventure through the stories we tell, through the stories we share, and through the stories we live. If you have found this episode and the entire Brand Bewitchery series helpful, then please, by all means, share it with anyone you know who will benefit from becoming a more confident and persuasive communicator to help them scale their storytelling. Our theme music is composed by Darius Holbert, marketing by Marissa Hill, and the show is edited by Caden Howell. If I can help you and your team excel through the stories you tell, well, hit our contact page at businessofstory.com for information on my in-person, virtual, and hybrid mastery courses, keynotes, and there's even a do-it-yourself storytelling training just waiting for you. Please join us next week when we will have a special guest with us to amplify this Brand Bewitchery series. And it's timely because after going through the story cycle system, you may well be in the throes of renaming your brand. Well, that, if you've ever done it before, is really tricky. No worries, you are in luck because Alexandra Watkins, founder of naming company Eat My Words and author of the best-selling book, Hello, My Name is Awesome. She will show you how to create brand names that stick. And your name is important because, as you know, it's where all of your brand storytelling starts. So join us next week for that. And until then, remember that the most potent story you will ever tell is the story you tell yourself. So make it epic. Thanks so much for listening.